Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Union St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. I'm Philip Emma Aguale. I invented a new supercomputer that could be used to solve the toughest problems arising in mathematics and physics. Such problems are called the Grand Challenge Problems of supercomputing. Back in 1989, the year I completed my invention and began appearing in major U.S. newspapers, Seymour Cray, who was the then leading mind in the world of vector processing supercomputers, could not understand the mathematics of where each of my 64 binary thousand initial boundary value problems should be and when it should be at each of my as many processors. Back in 1989, the supercomputer scientists that attempted to parallel process across an ensemble of processors were processing by the seat of their pants. That is, those supercomputer scientists of the 1970s and 80s did not understand the complicated mathematics and did not have the command of scientific materials and the subject matter knowledge that was needed to solve the grand challenge problem. The grand challenge problem was at the crossroad where calculus Algebra, physics, computing, and supercomputing met each other. Because they did not understand the grand challenge problem, the 25,000 vector processing supercomputer scientists of the 1980s and earlier began to hate the massively parallel processing supercomputer that I used to solve the grand challenge problem. Back in the 1980s, I was the only internet scientist that knew the 64 binary thousand or the 65,536 address tags that directed where on my internet each of my 65,536 initial boundary value problems of calculus and physics was delivered. So the 25,000 vector processing supercomputer scientists of the 1980s, reading my 65,536 email message passing codes, was as incomprehensible as reading a Chinese newspaper. My invention of how to provide the address tags was the necessary precondition to the invention of the massively parallel processing supercomputer that is also a new internet de facto. That invention has rich and fertile consequences and contributed to the more complete understanding of how and why this technology called parallel processing or solving millions upon millions of problems across as many processors and solving them at the same time makes the computer faster and makes the supercomputer super. My quest for the precursor to the modern supercomputer that is fastest by parallel processing across a new internet 
that is a new global network of processors, began as a vague idea. That quest began as the seed of an Iroko tree and blossomed 16 years later into the world's fastest supercomputer that is the Iroko tree of the unknown forest named the Massively Parallel Processing Supercomputer. The Iroko tree is the tallest tree in Igbo land of southeastern Nigeria. The Iroko tree grows along the west coast of Africa. The Iroko tree can live for up to 500 years. My quest for the parallel processing supercomputer began in the early morning of Thursday, June 20, 1974, in Corvallis, Oregon, United States. My quest for the modern supercomputer ended at 8.15 in the morning of Tuesday, the 4th of July, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States. That quest for the parallel processing supercomputer led to my deeper and surer understanding of the internet as a planetary supercomputer hopeful. I had ideas about parallel processing since 1974, but until the 4th of July 1989, I did not experimentally prove that parallel processing makes the impossible to compute possible to compute. My experimental discovery of parallel processing that occurred across my new internet that is a new global network of 65,536 processors occurred on the 4th of July, 1989. That invention of the parallel processing supercomputer was my lockdown evidence and it was the first experimental confirmation of the beginning of new era in the world of supercomputing. That experimental discovery was processor agnostic and was node agnostic. My discovery of the parallel processing supercomputer made the news headlines because I successfully tested the new supercomputer and that I experimentally confirmed it as the world's fastest supercomputer. My invention of the parallel processing supercomputer went beyond theory to become an experiment verified invention of a new supercomputer that is not a computer per se, but that is a new internet de facto. Insightful and brilliant lecture.